Bonaire's 1,000 Steps Dive Site. Arguably one of the most photographed places in the world. It's a long way down, yet you trudge down the coral steps. You stare out at the horizon and you get lost in the beauty. You look up the stairs and suddenly remember. You came here to dive. Will you know what you were looking at? Or will you just think, what is that thing? Why is it behaving like that? If you knew these answers, would your dive be that much cooler? Hey guys, welcome back. This is Rich. In this episode, we're going to be talking about reef identification and reef behavior. And uh, we talk about re reef identification. Uh, we've expanded to go beyond just reef coral fish and creatures to include historical artifacts because these particular items are a very important part of Bonaire's Reef. Uh, and it's things that you can see uh, that you don't have to go see in a museum. The two items we're going to see are from the 1700s and 1800s. Uh, they were used by the Dutch West Indies Company to uh, mine salt. And um, they, at that time, they also used uh, slavery to do this, which is part of our uh, historical past on Bonaire. So, you know, if you're on Bonaire uh, and you're diving, you, over time you'll become a, an historian too. We're going to see one of the most amazing fish you'll ever see probably in, in the Caribbean. It is so beautiful. It's called the Sargassum triggerfish and it starts at around 40 meters. So very few people have seen this fish uh, and when you do get to see them, they're very bashful and they go right in the hole. So they're, they're a tough one to film but we managed to catch it on film. Also, um, we are going to see Butter hamlets spawning is just really magical to watch the dance they go through to do this. We're also going to take you out at night to the Tolo dive site, maybe a day or two after the full moon, and the marine life that comes up will just blow you away. There's so much uh, in the water at that time. We've caught that on, on uh, camera. Uh, and we're also going to see something that very few people have seen ever on Bun Air. I won't talk about it. I'll wait for you to go see it in the video. So. This video, uh, there's a lot more. I mean, this, this video is absolutely packed uh, with content. And um, I think you'll learn a lot. I think it will help you on your next trip. And also learn a little bit about Bonaire's distant past. We're going to start our trip up at one of the most beautiful dive sites uh, on Bonaire. And we're going to go out and see the amazing coral that is out at that dive site. So with that, let's go dive. This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is a diver's life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true. So true that my life, that my life is a seashell. Is a seashell. Playa Bengi, sugary white sand slowly rises with the surge. The sensation of floating above clouds washes over you. Our journey begins. A school of yellowtail snapper appears at the base of the channel. Beautiful. We turn north.
Great star coral are often dome-like. Coral polyps contain symbiotic algae called zooxanthellae, which are brownish or green due to their pigment called chlorophyll. These are healthy. Bleaching occurs when the water is very warm, causing the algae to form toxins, and they are expelled by the coral. The coral feeds off this algae and prey caught by its tentacles. A brown mountainous star coral crowned by a pink sponge. Nature is amazing. A purple vase sponge appears within a mountainous star coral, an orange tube sponge, and a scaled lettuce coral. A yellow mouth grouper bumps his partner. A purple tube sponge. A tiger grouper. A school of bogus. A field of blade fire coral. Our next stop is Monk's Haven on Klein Bonaire. A large purple tube sponge marks the drop off. At 30 meters, large elephant ear sponges become more prevalent. Beautiful sponges adorn the wall. A spotted moray. A smooth trunk fish. Three dark spots at the base of the dorsal fin. A grazebee. A boulder star coral. Next up, something special. A squat anemone or sexy shrimp. You often find these hiding in sea anemone. A red lip blenny rests on a stinker sponge. When out of the water, these sponges emit a foul smell, hence the name. A pair of sand divers. an ocean surgeon fish. Kubera snapper get cleaned at the Harbor Village entrance. Normally shy, this huge Kubera snapper keeps a wary eye. Yet, it's something special, smaller marine life rule. A giant sea anemone with purple tips. A three-spot damselfish. Juvenile fish are prevalent here. Black sea rods sway with the surge. A yellow-tailed damselfish, juvenile. A fairy basslet. Pillar coral. Let's go visit the staghorn field at Bonbini Nakas, which sets at the base of a cliff. Blue chromis stand out like beacons.
this reap is healthy. A solitary elkhorn coral stands below the cliff. Resembling elkhorn horns, they stand up to the surge. A school of blue tang with three ambush predators hiding among them. A yellowfin malhara hovers on the edge of the red slave drop-off. A coney. Perhaps we need traffic control. At 40 meters down, we capture one of the most beautiful, rarely seen fish in the Caribbean, the sargassum triggerfish. One look and you know they are shy. This Graysby changed its colors to white with red spots. What are you looking at? At the Carl's Vision dive site, we see this beautiful butterprint brain coral. Flower coral. The wall is refuge from the current for marine life, such as this lionfish. Here we get a close look at a green moray, and much closer, a Caribbean lobster. This wall has beautiful white star sheet coral. The sea pearl and algae is one of the largest single cell organisms. A doctor fish cruises the plateau. Princess parrotfish change color with maturity. The shark sucker, a remora, came up the wall and took a liking to Doreen's wetsuit. She was not happy. This southern ray really does not like paparazzi. We better head to the White Slave dive site. There we'll check out some salt ship anchors from Bonaire's distant past. A spotted goatfish forages in the sand with sensory organs at the front called barbells. A mature yellowhead wrasse looks for scraps. A much younger yellowhead is learning. A red band parrotfish and sand filefish wait for a meal behind this red goatfish. We pass over the gorgonians and sea rods at the top of the wall. We are straight out from the White Slave Obelisk. We turn north. A red barrel sponge. 37 meters down, an 1800s Rogers anchor rises up out of the sand. Stout war courses of the 1800s, these anchors had a bolt in the center of the crown that allowed the arms to swivel and catch. A look at a great star coral reveals two sharp nose puffers. We can see mostly how it is constructed. A closer look at the ring or shackle reveals dense marine life and more vibrant colors.
let's take a look at the stock. Colorful coral and crustaceans and sharp-nosed puffers make it their home. Roger's anchors have a crown with arms that move on a bolt at the end. These are buried deep in the sand. The shank is covered in coral encrusting sponges and red encrusting brazoans. We take one last look and head north to the next anchor Doreen and I had discovered in a previous episode. This is an admiralty anchor based on the large ball at one end of the movable stock. Earlier versions broke a lot due to the wooden stock and in the 1830s and 1840s they went to an iron stock. Historical artifacts are an important part of Benares Reef. Here we step back in time to when the Dutch West Indies Company used slaves to mine the salt from the pans. The last time a human touched this anchor may be 200 years ago. Here is the ball. The other end of the stock is buried in the sand and is bent. Moving up the shank, we see encrusting gorgonians covering the balancing band. We reach the crown, arms, and flukes. Magnificent. We find ballast stones. You can learn more about the ballast stones and the anchors in our video, A Step Back in Time. We take one last look at the Rogers anchor, a black margate. A closer look. A purple rope-poor rope sponge. A rock beauty. A queen angelfish. We will now begin our night adventure at the Something Special dive site at dusk. Much of what we found was a first for us, giving us a new appreciation of how much more there is to discover. Let the magic begin. This gray triggerfish allowed us to get close. A first for us. It gave me a brief look and went about feeding off invertebrates in the sand. Our camera lights bring out the amazing colors on this stoplight parrotfish and smooth trunkfish. Beautiful. Watch the color patterns on this white spotted file fish. White spots appear on the left. This is a defense mechanism.
the peacock flounder swims up and stops. Eyes start back and forth as it draws in water to pass over its gills. As I rise, it rises up to prepare to move. An endangered hawksbill turtle. A porcupine fish. An adorable balloon fish. This giant sea anemone has a resident. A spotted cleaner shrimp swishes its antennae to attract fish to be cleaned. We leave this soapfish to experience the spawning ritual of the butter hamlets. Two butter hamlets come together at the top of a coral structure. Nope. Back off the lights. We try again. Still too close. We back up a little more. There they go. They intertwine, releasing eggs and sperm. They repeat their dance seemingly forever. But how can they do this? Well, butter hamlets are hermaphrodites and switch sexes during spawning. So if one has released all their eggs, they can switch and the other can fertilize the other's eggs. If you are a diver, you must go out at night nature will not disappoint. The long-spined sea urchin uses its mildly venomous spines to walk across the reef. They feed off algae helping to clean the reef. The periproctal cone resembling a blueberry is the sea urchin's anus. The arrow crab runs for cover Arrow crabs are nocturnal, scavenging for food at night and hiding in the day. They eat algae, worms, and other invertebrates and dead organisms. The oscillate swimming crab has an oscillated black spot on either side of the rear carapace and black claws. A saddled parrotfish. The knobby brain coral has hemispheric mounds, a brown chromis. We say goodbye to something special and head for the Tolo dive site just after the full moon. The marine life show will take your breath away. We approach the wall and small invertebrates appear in the water column. Ostracods are about to come out. A lone boga hovers by this sea rod. Arrow squid in attack formation. One arrow squid holds its ground. But as we approach, it fires its ink. Most people we know have never seen these on Bonaire. We approach it slowly. These squids are normally very deep. They have come to feed. It slowly turns to face me. Rearing back, it spits the remains of a fish at me. Slowly, it descends into the depths. The show increases and thousands of worms appear out of the darkness. Some are 30 to 40 centimeters long. I back up to show Doreen surrounded in marine life. 
The great migration up from the depths includes worms and small marine life in larval form. Our lights cause a green turtle to come out of its slumber and swim out over the reef. We try to keep our distance. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.